Okay, I want to talk a little bit about uh, Thesis Seminar Week 4. As we complete Week 3, I want to kind of recap where we've been and where we're going, specifically for this Week 4, which is actually the third of four weeks uh, where you have an opportunity to develop a literature review around a specific problem and one that you're going to later do research for uh, uh, later on this uh, semester. So I want to talk a little bit about the um, uh, week four. And as a reminder, uh, don't forget to, if you haven't already, uploaded your weekly journals. We'll have another one for this week in week four. I probably will post it in on uh, on Wednesday. And... You can be looking. Uh, you can be looking for that uh, in week four, but under lecture number four, you'll find this document, and it's basically the same information that we looked at last week. Many of you are just continuing to uh, progress through this process, but many of the essential questions are going to pertain to what you're doing. Uh, this week, as well as what you did last week. So I want to review those and the main points of the rest of this uh, handout, because again, I think most of us are still within a lot of, within the process of uh, developing a literature review around a specific problem. So let's take a look at the first research question. And if you look at, if you look at the first uh, essential question, it states, how does my thesis statement reflect a researchable problem? So beginning the first week of class, we looked at and discussed a specific problem that you relate to either as a teacher or as an English language learner. This is very important because it provides a significance or context of your study. It really addresses the why uh, of your study. Why are you spending uh, all of this time to develop this particular research project. And so when you're looking at your literature review, you're reviewing the articles, be thinking about a problem that that you're considering, but also find at least one other researcher who has research researched this particular problem. Find a researcher who declares that, in fact, this is a problem, whatever problem that you're uh, researching. Remember that when you present your oral defense, your first slide is going to be stating the problem. And it's always going to be better if you can not only state the problem in terms of how you view it, but also how the experts view it or how the other researchers have uh, viewed it. So if you can find a, research, uh, a researcher who has declared this a problem, then this will provide uh, more support to your to your opening slide, certainly in your uh, oral defense, but also in your introduction paragraph of your literature review, which we'll talk about uh, later and probably in week uh, eight or so. Okay, the next essential question, how does my thesis statement align to my literature review? So many of us spoke a lot about your thesis statement last week. We'll continue to talk about it in week four, but make sure that the thesis statement is a claim that specifically answers your research questions. Your one claim, your one sentence claim should articulate your position, your viewpoint on a particular issue that is related to your problem. So think of your research uh, or your thesis statement as having three sections. It begins with a topic, it includes an opinion, and then typically will include either reasons or ways that will subsequently be included in your two to four sections uh, or your main heading, uh, top headings in your literature review. So remember, two to four sections or two to, ma two to four main uh, level two headings will is probably a good uh, number to have in a literature review of this length. So make sure that you have those headings that directly relate back to your thesis statement. The third essential question, how does my research questions align with my literature review? Does my literature review answer my research questions? So again, make sure that your thesis statement directly answers 
your research questions and then make sure that the main sections as level two headings relate back to the thesis statement. Your main sections, your literature review is the long answer, the extended answer to your research questions. It's an argument that uh, that allows you to uh, have a position where you're trying to persuade someone to think differently or to take action, but again, based on your research questions. If you're looking at a problem, you're probably thinking in terms of some sort of solution where others, other researchers have already investigated and, and in these particular areas and where they offer opinions and findings that support your arguments. Remember that an argumentative essay typically has an initial argument, a counter argument, and a rebuttal. So it's not enough just to post one side of the argument throughout your literature review. It's better to have opposing viewpoints where you're going back and forth. You're synthesizing and analyzing the information in a way that you are organizing an argument uh, to answer the, the research questions. The last essential question, how does the overall organization of, your, of my literature review reflect an argument or point of view? What is my overall position? I discussed in prior uh, videos the benefit of trying to use a matrix. In fact, I talked about two, a two-step process where you go through and you list your claims on, in one column, and then along the matrix you provide uh, citations or support for each of your arguments and your claims and how they all fit into the different sections. So again, make sure that you have support that's, that, uh, that aligns with the different arguments uh, throughout your literature review, but make sure that you're taking a position, that you are arguing for something you're, or you're arguing against something, but you are basically working or thinking in terms of a solution or a better way of maybe implementing a teaching technique, maybe a, spe a specific technique that promotes a learning strategy, maybe it's an interactional pattern, a new way of using some sort of material, didactic material or technology, and so on. Now the process here we have, uh, this is very similar to uh, last week, okay? so. All of you are going through this process, and it will typically take more than a week. That's why much of the information that I'm providing here is a repeat of prior weeks, uh, simply because it does take time to go through here. But I would like to go and talk more specifically about the context of your study, because I think at this point in the process, it's good to review again some of these questions to make sure that you have answers to most of these questions or that the answers are becoming clearer as you move throughout the process. The first question, what is your primary focus? Uh, this is something that we've talked about since the first week. Most of you are dealing with some sort of real world problem, right? So you're thinking in terms of a very practical situation or context that you've had experience with and hopefully also can provide other expert support that, uh, that you can use uh, through citations in your, uh, in your document, in your text. The second question, who is your primary audience? Think of this at, in terms of who would most likely benefit from reading your thesis. Okay, so try to avoid saying all teachers, all administrators, but try to be very specific in who would be the ideal candidate for reading your text. And try to keep that in mind as you, as you develop your literature review and as you're uh, beginning your own study and later report your findings. Who are your participants? Now, uh, many of you have already started going to the institutions. Some of you have already begun to uh, get the permission that you need, and uh, we've talked a little bit about this, and I've shared with you all some examples of letters that you can use if you need uh, letters uh, signed by me or, or, or maybe the head of the department. But make sure that you're getting the, the proper permissions. Make sure that you're asking the right questions now to get a feel for whether or not these institutions and or teachers are going to be good candidates for for your study. 
You don't want to wait until the day, day one of the data collection process to be looking uh, for your participants. You really want to try to do as much of that as possible before you begin, again, the data collection process so that you, you're off to, you can begin right away from the very first day uh, to co collect the data. Uh, the next question, what are any comparative elements to include in your study? This is going to be between or within group comparisons. So think of this as uh, the simple example would be one uh, with between groups would be looking at two classrooms and comparing uh, different uh, uh, aspects of both groups. It could be, for example, one teacher with two different groups, or it could be two separate teachers with two groups and doing a, a comparison between those groups. Or you could uh, do a comparison within a group. You take one class and you're actually looking at different, uh, different students, for example, or the ways that in, in which a teacher is uh, working with certain students within the same group. This has a lot to do with the unit of analysis. If you're looking at an individual, for example, an individual student versus an indiv individual teacher or, an in or a particular group or even a department within a, a school or maybe even a school, a total, uh, a complete uh, curriculum within a school. The next question, what is the temporal orientation of your study? Now, for all of us, we'll be doing a cross-section study and uh, most of us won't be doing a longitudinal study simply because of the time factor. We only have three weeks to collect data, so uh, we won't be doing a longitudinal study. But as I've mentioned in other videos, that if you do find studies that are lo longitudinal and quantitative, you certainly can use those in your literature review to support your ideas. Even though your, your study won't be uh, quantitative and it won't be longitudinal, they still may be used, the findings within those studies may be used to support your arguments throughout your literature review. Uh, the next question, what is your research objective? So is it to identify, explore, describe, explain, evaluate? Again, this is a good question to think about in terms of um, what kind of data that you're going to be collecting and then later on how you're going to report that. What is your qualitative approach? Most of you are doing a qualitative study, so as we've discussed in prior weeks, you may be doing a phenomenological study, grounded theory, probably not. You may be doing a discurs discursive analysis or discourse analysis or conversational analysis. Many of you are doing that, especially in the case of L1, L2. That's a good uh, subject a good type of study where a conversational analysis uh, is very important. You won't be doing a narrative study um, because uh, you won't be doing a, an action research study where you're reporting, self-reporting, and using the first person. All right, so take a look at the different types of studies. A case study, for example, will be a common uh, study or a common type of qualitative study that most of you will be doing. And uh, it's possible to have a combination of some of these. These are things we can talk about this week as you get more familiar with your study, as you start to put together more of your literature review and, and you're continuing to think about your own research. What are the attributes of human experience to examine? We've talked about this, especially in week one. What kind of behavior, what kind of attitudes or opinions, perceptions, values and emotions what kind of knowledge? So each of these terms by themselves are still general. So you need to be thinking more specifically what kinds of values, what kinds of emotions, and uh, be able to uh, have a clear idea, I think at this point, what you're going to be looking for, because that's going to form a lot of your ideas when you're looking at research studies and really take those as, as examples. When you're looking at studies that are very similar to yours, what kinds of values did they research? What kind of opinions or behaviors did they look for? Because those are going to be examples that you're likely uh, to uh, also follow in your own research. What are the data collection methods? Okay, so you're going to have uh, participant observation, in-depth interviews, focus groups. Again, we're going to talk more in detail about this question, but it's not too early to 
be thinking about conceptualizing what you're likely to do. Again, these, this could all be subject to change, but it is important to look at the other research uh, examples, the, the, the studies that you have found, and look at the data collection methods that they've used and ask yourself, well, what, what aspects of these methods are appropriate for my own study? The next question, what are the procedures that will inform your study? Now, this is probably, um, this may be clear for you at this point. It may not, and if it's not, certainly that's okay. We'll be talking about this as we get a little bit closer to the data collection process. But you're going to be thinking in terms of listing and categorizing timelines. And again, we're going to talk in greater detail as we get a little bit closer to uh, the data collection process. So don't worry too much at this point. If some of these procedures are not clear, they will be uh, a little bit later in a few weeks. Same way with pretty much the rest of these questions. What are your sampling procedures, sampling strategies, recruitment methods? Uh, much, uh, many of these questions here towards the end of this document relate to the data collection process and they will become more evident again as we move on. The last question, which actually should be at the very top, in fact I probably should move this question uh, to the top of the document, what are your research questions? So in week four, the first question I'm probably going to ask, if it's not the problem question, it will be a question related to research questions. So what are your research questions? What is your thesis statement? Because the thesis statement should answer your research questions. How are you planning to divide up the two to four main sections that will make up your literature review? And what kind of headings are you going to use for each of those two to four main sections that link directly back to the thesis statement? These are precisely the types of questions that I'll be asking you. In many cases, we talked about this last week, but we'll certainly gonna, we'll, we certainly will talk about it again in week four, probably in week five as well. Try to set your goals to uh, writing out as much text as possible this week in week three. This is the third week. I should say this is week four, but I'm thinking in terms of the four weeks that you have to develop your literature review. So you're basically entering the third of four weeks to complete your literature review. We have this week and we have next week. Those of you who have something uh, finished at the end of this week, I can provide you feedback and we'll have a, a complete fourth week for you to make changes. If you're still adding to the text, then I will give you feedback as you request. And as, I, as we go through your, your document in our tutoring sessions, I will provide you feedback certainly during those moments. But if you need feedback outside of our tutoring sessions, send me a, a message, leave a comment in your Google Doc, and I usually get a notification in my email, so it's usually not necessary to send me a message in Google Classroom to prompt me to look at your work. I usually try to keep up with, uh, with that through my email notifications, but in any event, if I, for whatever reason, do not respond in a timely fashion, um, then certainly feel free to email me or send me, better yet, send me a comment in Google Classroom and I will uh, get to your document. It's always easiest and best to receive frequent feedback throughout the process instead of uploading everything at the very end of the four weeks. I would really suggest not to do that. In fact, every tutoring session, I'm asking everyone, what do you have so far? What do you have in your Google Docs? Because basically when we start our tutoring session, I'm opening up your Google Doc and I'm looking to see what you have. I'm not expecting to see all of the text. I'm not saying I'm not expecting to see, you know, perfect uh, text. I'm basically just want to see where you're at so that I can try to provide you the guidance that you need. And uh, again, take advantage and get the most out of our tutoring sessions by coming in with specific questions. Again, whether you post them in the Google Docs or you just come prepared with certain questions, but do try to upload frequently to Google Docs. 
Do not try to work in another separate document and copy and paste it over to Google Docs. Google Docs, uh, it saves everything. You're not going to lose anything. If for any reason you accidentally delete information from Google Docs, there's an easy way within seconds to recuperate what you had. Every time you make a modification or a change, whether it's just one letter or a complete paragraph or a complete section, it's, it saves the ver each version. So we can go back to prior revisions and easily go back by date to any prior uh, version of your document. Most of you are familiar how that works, but <clears throat> I think it <clears throat> it's worth uh, repeating to give you the peace of mind that uh, you can't break it, all right? So don't worry if you make a mistake or you accidentally delete something, we can always get it back. And if that should happen and you're not sure how to recuperate the information, then let me know. All righty, I think for the most part, that is what I wanted to talk about. I think it's worth also looking at organizing your literature review. I have a section, again, this is a carryover from last week talking about premises and claims. This relates a lot to the meal plan. And I, we certainly will be getting into this more as I begin looking at your individual body paragraphs. But do keep in mind this information. I know it's a lot in this document as well as last week, but keep referring back to this document as you are uh, completing your literature review because I think that this information will become clear as we discuss it more and as you get more familiar with your literature review and, and the process of developing your ideas and your arguments that relate to your problem. So I think we'll stop there for, uh, for today. And again, make sure that you're asking questions. Don't spend days lost, uh, not, sure, not sure what to, if you're not sure what to do next, you're not sure how to proceed, that's exactly when you need to ask, whether it's an email, whether it's a, a question in your Google Docs, or whether you're asking for additional one-on-one uh, -on -one time to look at some of the specifics of your work. So I look forward to discussing more this week with you uh, individually and your, your, uh, your research. And I will go ahead and conclude this, conclude this, um, this video and we'll see everybody later this week in, in your tutoring session.